Hello and welcome to the Lost of Us, episode seven out of nine. Is that, something so that, close. Seven nine. is that something they confirmed that there was originally ten and they squished two into one? Was that something that... I don't know, some shows now like I to do know. that. It used to be that they were 13 episodes, then it got to ten, and now some people do like eight or nine. Back in my day. Back in my day, it was like 22 episodes a season. Oh, the good old days. And it's funny because there would be more what people call filler. But the fact is, if it was good filler, it would add to the connections all the characters have. Well, I guess what happened was that HBO and stuff was kind of like, and British shows, I suppose, to some extent, kind of set the idea in people's minds of like, less episodes means better, which is kind of a logical thing, right? It's like, well, you're not stretched more to concentrated, thin. You have yeah. more time per episode. More, yeah, more concentrated. But thanks to a lot of these bad <laughs> Disney and Marvel shows, less episodes are starting to feel correlated with the worst quality for some reason. Well, yeah, there's loads it's of really filler. Weird. It's kind of funny. I went straight to talking about filler, which kind of implies you're right about like the perception of it all. When mm -hmm. there are shows we've watched that are 22 per season that have way more plot, way more quality. But oh, well. Oh, yeah. Um, I believe I read that the premiere episode was originally split into two, and then HBO told them to combine them into one because they were afraid not enough people would stick around after where the first episode was originally supposed to end. Right. Um, they wanted I heard to, it was get, to put in know, more Joel and Ellie. Joel and Ellie. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to get them going on their journey, like outside the zone for the end of the premiere. Mm. As far as I know, the numbers have gone up. Uh, with the more of the shows come out. It'll be really curious to see the conversation again about the big decision Joel's going to make at the end, uh, be it now in TV format. Obviously, pending exactly what changes they may or may not make. Still, be quite interesting. Potentially. I believe, before we even talk about preamble for what this episode may be, we should probably do our wonderful, our epic comment showcase. Comment showcase. Here it is. Is that the right theme tune? Did John did it. John got it. It's all right. We made it. It's a great theme tune. It's very catchy. Oh, wait. Showcase. We did it. Here we go. Regarding the rule of the clickers, I guess the EFAP crew are not aware that in both games, the clickers you can use echolocation when they click, meaning even if you're completely still and silent, if the clicker faces your direction and starts clicking, it immediately detects you. Or, well, takes three seconds to find you if you're in ten or so meters away. If a child clicker is looking at Kathleen and Kathleen's completely silent, the child clicker will attack Kathleen by the logic of the game. That is something we didn't mention at all, which is kind of bizarre to me, because we all know this, or at least I'm pretty sure me, John, and Free would definitely know this, having played the game so much. We just never use the word echolocation location at all when we're talking about it. I don't know why. I could have sworn we've talked about this in earlier episodes, like episode one or I two. I thought that we had mentioned it, yes. The whole thing with the clickers is that their eyes are covered by the cordyceps, and consequently they need to use echolocation in order to find enemies. The obvious thing in the game being that, you know, when they each fill a different slot, the runners can see you. So you have to worry about line of sight with clickers. It's much more about... Yeah, they, they, yeah, clickers are a lot stronger, but with clickers, because I can't see... It's much more a game of sound because I even had like the focus mode where it was about detecting like how loud you are. So you need to like sneak and, and sort of crouch walk around the yeah. place. And it means that, yeah, like if clickers see you, like if you're in the line of sight, you might be okay if you're moving slowly enough and quietly enough. But it's true. I don't know why we didn't mention it. It's just another reason why it's all right that that clicker attacks Kathleen. Okay. She's dead. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Yet another <laughs> reason. Wasn't. There you go. Mention now. I find it funny, haha, <laughs> how the show glosses over the fact that Tommy going radio silent thanks to his wife is what drove Joel to go on the journey in the first place. Dude created a domino effect that got Tess killed and loads of other people killed. Was the goal with the, the initial car parts to get a car to get to Tommy, was that the idea? So, yeah. in terms so, of trying to figure out the timeline, I think it was, I think so, yeah. In which case, yes, I think that the episode had a job to do and it didn't, which was uh, address the fact that he went radio silent on someone who desperately relies on it and will take drastic action when he doesn't hear from him. And the reason seems to be, we stay radio silent to avoid attracting anyone here. It's like, that's great and everything, but I'm your brother and you owe me more than that. Like. The, that didn't happen, I don't think. But there had to be some other option at Tommy's disposal to, uh... I guess well, the reason if, why if I not, said not, he needs not quite quite to have that moment panic. where he's like, I'm fucking, I'm sorry. I'm just, so, like, yeah, this, it'd be worth this to have it. And, uh, I guess yeah. it's this comment I think this comment overplays how much of that is on Tommy. Um, um, it would be cool to have that be said to him and see what he says back sort of thing, though, at least. Right, because he probably would be like, well, how how can you put that on me? Like, how could I have possibly known about all of this? Well, yeah, and um, part of uh, what happens in the episode is that Joel talks about how it's like 
it's why you left me, isn't it? Which is, I guess, how he now sees the radio situation. Not one of, like, negligence, but one of, like, I this is my chance to get, yeah, abandoned. Yeah. It's half and half for me. I think it would have been cooler to maybe have it be a bit more of it, be like, uh, you know, I searched for you. I, I did everything to find you. Then he's like, I didn't ask you for anything or, or something like that, you know? Well, it's some drama. It's a, yeah, it's it's a well drama. for drama, so worthwhile. All righty. Fringy. Fringy. Tommy says, I have to do this for the greater good because he believes in the cause of the Fireflies. In the game, Tommy sees how concerned Joel is for Ellie's safety after the attack on the dam and suddenly understands what Joel meant by saying, Tommy, I need this. He needs his brother to save him from the possibility of reliving Sarah's death if something was to happen to Ellie. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure we talked about this in prior episodes. I know what the game's doing. I think they're trying to imply that you made it seem as though Tommy's, like, 90% of his motivation is for the greater good as opposed to other more personal motivations. Well, okay, well, so to clarify, because I'm pretty sure I mentioned it before, the whole big relevant part with the Henry and Sam plot in the game is that that is, like, the moment that kind of reinforces in Joel's mind, I need to offload Ellie, like, I don't want to be dealing with this anymore. It just gives him more of a thrust to be like, well, Tommy, you knew the Fireflies, you were connected to all of that, you can do it. I mean, obviously... Obviously, there is that whole notion that Tommy is, you know, concerned about Joel and everything, right? Because, yeah, in the scene that plays out, when he sees that, I think Tommy says, God damn it, like, I need to talk to you, Maria. And then they have the big argument and then they go off. So, yeah, it, in the game, it is definitely more than just because he believes in the cause of the Fireflies. But I'd still say that statement bears out true, right? He says, I have to do this for the greater good. Like, that is part of why he said it. Yeah, I, th I think I would concede it's the primary, it seems to be, anyway. I think um, it is the main one because there's the connection to the Fireflies. While in the but, I mean, show, of course there was, it feels it's like much more about the Joel. personal connection. The yeah. fireflies are not very relevant at all, which I think I would guess was the point that I was trying to get at. Am I doing Chad here or the well, actually kind of voice? <laughs> Why don't you just switch between them and it won't matter what the comment is before you read it? <laughs> <laughs> don't know why they made Tommy a father. Why would you want to go on a mission with a kid on the way? He was willing to do it, and he is going to go on an even more dangerous one in season two. Ellie provides the possibility to cure the infection, so helping her is helping his kid in the long run. <laughs> That's exactly it. They will add more depth to his character, because leaving Maria and his kid both would be an even bigger decision that he will have to make. Plus, seeing Ellie kill a pregnant Mel and seeing a pregnant Dina would be an even bigger psychological hit for him. Well, I so, had not thought of those things, yeah, so that is interesting. The first thing we say when, we, when they show that happen is we comment on like potential story potency and that's what that decision is. They've done that because it's going to create more layers moving forward. And so the only problem you might think it highlights is, well, then why would he go anywhere? He's got to protect his wife and kid, right? And uh, it's easy justifications. You just have to have the character believe that this is going to be the most beneficial decision to his wife and kid. Yep. People have gone on dangerous missions and done dangerous things and, and have fought for dangerous causes. If they, even if they have kids or have part kids of why way. Joel wants him to go is that he believes that he can handle this sort of back and forth mission to where he's going while Joel's not sure yeah. he can. And there's a lot of reasons to believe that one psychologically, but there's also just, he knows the terrain, like he knows the area. I do find it a bit of a shame that they cut the escape so short after Joel gets stabbed versus the game with how close Ellie comes to dying a couple of times during the sequence in the game. It's basically show Joel's worst fears almost playing out right in front of him. And it would tie well into his actions from here on uh, in her defense. Probably the I think one that thing one's complicated. I would have liked maybe to have kept somehow is that I quite like the imagery of him bleeding out, fading out of consciousness, watching her narrowly survive an attack. Because it, 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 as yeah. they've just said, however, we'll say Ludo, we're going to be getting something pretty strong like this in episode eight, I would imagine. I think she's fighting a fair number of people during that when they're walking back to the horse. Yes. Um, whereas obviously the show is much more low... Scaled down, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Very much scaled down, which is, probably plays out more logically in a live action show. Yeah, it can have more of a punch potentially too when you scale certain mm -hmm. things down. I thought it was common knowledge <laughs> to never pull out anything that has punctured your body. Don't pull out, guys. Moore's David Attenborough accent is top notch. Also, I have no experience or knowledge of this at all, but wouldn't pulling the knife or whatever had stabbed Joel out to make things worse? I thought you were meant to leave things in until there's a safe way to remove them slash to prevent blood loss. It just seems strange to me how he randomly removed the object and then he bleeding suddenly got so much worse. Like, why would you do that? In the game, it obviously made sense because he was impaled on something, but this is so different. I prefer the rebar over being stabbed. There's an actual reason to take it out. He is pinned with it. As for the stab in the show, he shouldn't have pulled it out. It's basic medical aid to not take something out if you can. Try and stabilize it, say, 
by wrapping it tightly to you to keep it from moving around and leaving it in gives you a higher chance of not bleeding out. Oh no, I got stabbed by a thing. I should totally pull this out and let myself bleed like crap. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a smart move? <laughs> no! No, it wouldn't! Stop doing this! Ah! <laughs> At least in the game, he was stuck on something, so he had no choice. So, let's talk about this. Uh, uh, I was playing okay. Atomic Heart, and I had people back and forth thing a, a big bunch about this. We got some experience, maybe, on this with, with rags here about, about wounds, but then there's also our uh, basic knowledge when it comes to these sorts of events. The reason we didn't comment on it, apparently, is that the four of us had a similar uh, perspective on this, which was that Joel, in shock, pulled something out that he thought was going to be a lot shallower than it actually was. And uh, you do that in that environment to immediately prevent any possible infection, or at least further infection than is already there, because it's, it's an old piece of wood that's stuck in him. It's really bad if it gets into your, your insides, so to speak. I don't think, especially judging from his reaction, that he thought it was anywhere near as deep as uh, it ended up being. Well, it was the snapped off handle of a wooden bat, right? Yep, that's, what that's it was. right. Okay, yeah. And there's just a really long shard of it that was inside, and he didn't think it of was. Of course, the fact that he didn't feel that was, like clearly uh, that's the thing, the I didn't, adrenaline. That's how I took it when I watched it. I was like, oh, fuck. He, like, obviously, he was hoping that was uh, not as bad as it actually was. As we sit around watching this in the comfort of our own homes, on our chairs, in our houses, and we're not pumping, you know, full of adrenaline, and we're not stressed out, and we're not in intense pain, and we have not just killed someone with our hands. It's easy to look at someone else and criticize the decisions that they make in those kinds of moments. Um, he was obviously in a very stressful situation, so him doing that, I think it... If you survived this long in a post-apocalypse, you probably would have come to understand the whole concept of, you know, like, leaving something in because you don't want to bleed out. I just think the fact that when it actually happens to you and you're in that situation I and, think that's a good argument yeah and, and you look whole... down and it's I mean what it when, it's the, when you look down and it's in you it you might not be thinking about that you might think like oh shit this thing's in me I have people so. fighting over it in chat, and uh, one person said, the whole fucking point is you're supposed to wait until you're in a safe place before you yank it out so that you can pull out the, the to come blood. And then someone else said, no, the whole fucking point of not pulling it out is that you can get to a hospital where they can sort you out because you're already going to be set for antibiotics. They'll take care of it. This world does not have that. This world doesn't even necessarily yeah. have necessary safe places, so to speak. like they're being chased by bandits. But him pulling it out has reason behind it, and he's in shock. Oh, and, and what does it look like if you're on a horse that it's galloping and you've got a giant chunk of wood stuck in your That's gut. another thing that happened. So someone in chat said, obviously you shouldn't have pulled it out because having a wound just open like that on the horse is going to crush and open and blah, blah, blah. And then someone said, how is it better with the wood in that he's on the horse? Yeah, bouncing up and down while so, the horse yeah. is running. What I'll say I feel is, like the reality is there are no great choices here in no, terms and, of what and, to do. Uh, all the que the question is, can you believe he would make that decision in that moment? And my answer is yes. I don't really Absolutely have Absolutely, I could. Him. Yeah. If you're in a situation like that and you're with him and he pulls that out and you got to get on that horse, you want to be holding something, putting a lot of pressure on there and you want to keep that, you know, kind of still and you want to make sure that you can kind of sort of seal it back up as best as you can. You don't want it to just have blood flowing everywhere because that's not good. And yeah, I still think it's, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, even if we counted this strictly as a flaw that he pulled it out, I would still count it better as the, than the game, because the game when he just should have been dead. Just throwing this comment into the wild, because A, haven't seen a comment bringing it up, B, I'm curious and would like to explore and dive deep, and C, why not? At 3340, where the dog is sniffing out for infection, it gives Ellie the pass. Mahler and Rags briefly infer that it's because of her immunity, I think. It is a reasonable interpretation to make. Ellie's immunity, from what I understand, is rare and special, so there may be effects we don't know about. Having said that, does it seem convenient or lucky that her immunity has this effect? There might even be an argument that it is plot armor. On top of that, the system the posse uses to search for infected seems a bit contrived as well. They have guns, and they clearly don't mind using up their bullets or making noise since the guy says, quote, last chance for a bullet. Why not order the duo to strip to check for bites? I think the series may have ended if that happened. Perhaps this moment with the dog was meant to set up part of the later emotional conversation between Joel and Tommy, where Joel feared Ellie would be ripped up. However, I do wonder if it was worth the cost of having the dog. Is there a way to write the scene where the tension could still be present 
but still have something more logical than a dog search. I don't really take um, any issue with it. I don't have any issue with it at all. So we know that the time it takes between getting bit and someone turning into an infected is at the most, like if they get bit on like the ankle or something, it's going to be like, what, 12 hours? Pretty quick. So, so okay, the, something like that. Yeah, yeah so North it's going to be a day. Probably not. It, there's not going to be a lot of time. It's a it's a very quick onset for this kind of an infection. If they have a dog who's doing it, dogs are really good at this sort of thing. And if they have a dog who's doing it, then they have experience doing this in the past and they believe the dog to be pretty accurate and it's shown itself to be pretty accurate. And I think it's a matter of what it's actually smelling. It's probably smelling the wound itself when it's smelling people because again it's not like this is a a long process if you've been bit by it the bite and the wound leave some kind of a an odor that's on the outside of the body because of you know the bite and that's what the dog is probably smelling but ellie's wounds have been healed for months and i don't think that the presence of this whatever it is in the blood we don't have any reason to think that it's perceptively different to you know regular blood especially when it's inside of her maybe if ellie had big open wounds but you know even then i doubt it because the wounds wouldn't be like infection bites or anything really here um I'm pretty sure the commentary even says like well yeah i mean you know it's science fiction right like whatever the immunity is it may just manifest in a way that means that she's immune from the dog noticing. Uh, I suppose it really is the question of is it that unreasonable or ridiculous that they would use a dog to search? I don't and think it's unreasonable. Like, no, as as Ranger said, said if it now, works. Right? If it works. And it, even compared yeah, to stripping them, like I would rather use the dog. The dog is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like the dog is better because the dog can just instantly, especially if it has a reliable track record. I mean, we use dogs now, right, to search for things. Yeah, we do. And dogs they're pretty are, good. And it truly really, is. Yeah, they're. Really up to the writer. It is the middle of winter. It's truly up to the writer whether or not dogs can sense it in, in things, slash uh, whether or not the dogs are even immune to the, the virus. They've obviously chosen uh, one of two options on both of those. And then we look at what we got, which is that we got the tension with Joel being really, you know, scared about what was going to happen to then feed into the scene with Tommy. One scene I dislike in this episode is with the sniffing doggo. If Ellie has traces of virus left from fighting off infected, why did it get super friendly? Conversely, if she isn't a carrier, why did it approach her so much more antagonistically than Joel? I get it, that's how the show creates dispels tension, but doesn't make much sense to me within the show. Well, you can easily headcanon that the dog thought it smelled something, maybe, but then didn't. Maybe. It could have just been just that's how the dog was feeling in that moment. We have no real clue. The dog made its choice that, you know, she was cool. And we don't know what the the traces of this virus would, if at all, smell like. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see this as being contradictory. It's just uh, just some choices made to have the scene get a bit more tension that doesn't, you know, contradict anything. I like in the scene where Joel is teaching Ellie how to shoot. His main critique is that she keeps flinching. Then, when he takes the gun and shoots the dummy, he doesn't flinch. But she still does, even though she's not the one with the gun to show that. Yeah, she is flinching, and Joel does know what he's talking about. It shows his experience with a weapon, that he can recognize someone else's shortcomings with it and try to teach them. Knowing how to do something, and then knowing how to do it so well that you can teach it to others are on two totally different levels. I just thought that was neat. There's a couple of neat things that happen in, in relation to that in the show. Also a couple of flaws mm -hmm. here and there, but hey, you point them out where you can. Speaking of... Fun fact, around the time Joel and Ellie crossed the bridge in this episode, it is possible to spot the filming crew in the corner. Really? I, I double-checked, and this, this is true. <laughs> I the you would. big wide shot with they're heading across oh, the Oh, yeah, wow, the look bridge. at that. Yeah, oh, right, my goodness. see that? Look there it that. is. There they are. They're right down there. There's that oh, bottom wow. left there. Uh, look at just that. a big crowd of people. <laughs> it's like, that's, oh, uh, that's all good. All right, well... Hey, Joel it's, and Ellie, I, look, survive. <laughs> it's a uh, bird's eye view, right? Over yes. the bridge. All the Jackson people, they're, they they come across these two people in the wilderness and just like a film crew following <laughs> them in the middle of the apocalypse. We're filming a little documentary. We've been going for 20 years and our whole point is to stay off the grid and not connect to the world in any way. And you're like, oh. Everyone that they meet goes along with it. They don't bother. They act like the <laughs> film crew's never there. Like all the raiders and even the zombies and everything, they know, so they just ignore the film crew. The old couple at the start had seriously some of the funniest dialogue I've heard. She gives so little of a shit and probably knows that lying and being hostile would just make it worse. Her husband clearly being annoyed at her decisions makes it so much funnier. Nice with some proper and appropriate levity and a very dour series. <laughs> 
you. Yeah, I really like. I'm that very sorry, album. by the way. I'm not. I don't even like. I'm just fucking around. I don't know no, what no, that no, voice was no offense for. to the commenters. These are fine comments. I did really like that scene with the old couple. They were neat. Well, yeah, so the way I, like I imagine it happened was she was just sitting in there doing a thing. He comes in with a gun to her and says, like, don't make any sudden movements. Blah, blah, blah. And, and, and she's just like, uh, am I dead then? Or what are we doing? And he's just like, no, yeah. no, I'm just, I just need some information. Then I'll leave you alone. She's like, okay. And then like, they wait for the husband. Eventually she's just like, do you want some soup? Like I could totally <laughs> see that happening. It'd be really fun. Yeah. While I do largely agree with you guys' analysis of the series, it does feel like you guys have given way more grace to projects you want to be good and much more critical life of things you want to suck what do you mean want to be good and want to suck that's not a thing for us we take no, everything I as it comes say, we want we want that, everything yeah, to be good so <laughs> yeah anything. ideally if everything could that'd be nice but i'm pretty sure you guys can just look at the way we talked about this show before it came out we were not that optimistic no we shout on it quite a bit and um, we were we, doing we memes were about the last of us too honestly about uh about what the show was going to be but I feel like at this point it's basically won us over by being pretty consistently quality. I will never stop referencing how in Batwoman, the second they gave us a good scene, we all shut the fuck up and then praised it. Yes, that's right. The scene with uh, Luke and, and that guy. Yeah, I, I've referenced yeah, it before and again. Like, how do you think that happens if all we're looking to do is clown on a show? The goal is not to be bad faith no. in, in our coverage, like, ever. Yeah, like, we want good stuff. I don't like these sorts of observations of, like, oh, you guys are just giving this one so much leeway. It's like, man, I really don't feel like that's the case. Make better arguments. Like that's what I'm going to keep famous. saying back to this. Make well, make, make some arguments. Make an argument at all, I think, is what I want, instead of just saying it. Yeah, because obviously all we have to say in response is, oh, no you. I think that you guys go way too harsh on things you don't like, and you're way nicer to things you do like, in, you know, opposite to us, I guess. I wondered this about Batwoman and the Resident Evil movies. You don't need to wonder about those. You're okay. <laughs> I guess the thing is that Batwoman's an interesting one, because it's like, so when you go to watch Batwoman, you know it's going to suck, right? It's like, yeah. We're 99.9% what, what confident. And yet, we still yeah, point out like, if we think it's doing good at anything. And I guess yeah, because the they had that one good be, scene. That's right, one good scene in two seasons. I think they've had, I, like, I instances have... of acting and moments where we've been like, oh, that looked okay. You know, like, choreography, mm -hmm. maybe. But most of the yeah, time, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. shitty. Because obviously, we expect it to be bad, and we expect that that badness is going to be really funny and worthwhile to point out and observe but i mean if a good scene shows up if something is commendable then it ought to be commended if you feel that way then you'll have to prove it provide a similar point that they let pass in things they like but do the opposite uh in things they don't like the last of us 2 versus god of war ragnarok when they talk about how the games emotionally manipulate you using the death of a dog so I'm hoping that the commenter is pointing out, it's like, that's an example. Uh, the problem is, it's like, am I meant to read that as a thing where we let it pass in Ragnarok, but criticize it in The Last yeah, of Us? Yeah, 100%. 100 I, think, actually, I think the point yeah. there is that Efab are biased in favor of God War Ragnarok, and so they allow we, it. We talked about it, though. We, we did, we Fringy. Talked about we it. talked about it for so fucking long. We talked we about it on our coverage, talked and we it talked and about we it them. in response to the Synthetic Man video, who made the same yeah, point about like, The Last of Us. We got to speed run it a little bit, because this is the thing. It's okay, our job. We got to explain this stuff. People apparently didn't understand so we gotta do it again the purpose in the last of us 2 and how killing a dog was supposed to achieve something in terms of writing it's like what happened well isn't it sad that ellie kills a dog that was friendly to abby earlier in the timeline and you were happy with this dog and you know this because of a scripted fucking fetch sequence meant to make abby come across as more likable but also to just make you be like oh cool a dog and then it's really sad because <laughs> you you kill that dog as as ellie isn't that sad it's like okay and so this is an attempt to humanize her her desperately because this takes place soon after she's killed Joel and you're playing as her so her playing with a dog is supposed to make you be like oh I like dogs okay Abby isn't so bad and then to have Ellie kill that same dog you're like oh Ellie oh but it's like what? well except That's... remember it was the other way around the dog dies first and then you find out oh, oh, I don't look, I'm not talking about happy. how it's I just mean like what we're supposed to take away from it it's well, the dog you played well, yeah, fetched it, with isn't that fucking sad that's it's that's it it has no layers beyond that that's, well, I say it's transparent, it it's pathetic, and it's an attempt to jumpstart likability in a character. I have yeah, no sympathy throwing... for a fucking creature exactly. that tries to kill me just because I played fetch with it earlier. I don't even know, like, it's a, why would earlier in timeline, later in uh, game? Continuity? Or... Yeah, continuity, that'd be it. Look at cute dog, and then how cute dog likes Abby, don't you like Abby, and then don't you hate the, the dog had to die sad. Do you remember the controversy over that, too? They promised no one would have to kill a dog in the game, and then they had to. That was oh, the dog right. they had to kill. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeez, alright, yeah. Now, maybe someone in the audience is thinking, what, that's the exact same thing as Ragnarok, though. That right there, what you just said, that's the same as Ragnarok. So, okay, in Ragnarok. 
the primary purpose, I think, of the event is to show Atreus, like a character we've known and fucking hopefully liked, for 50 hours dealing with death. This is going to feed into the major... Dealing with the impermanence. The impermanence of life. The major plotline is going to be his ability to deal with his father's incoming death and a big old chunk mm -hmm. of foreshadowing that his desperation to prevent death can lead to much more drastic decisions, such as hanging out with Odin or sympathizing with Asgard. Those are going to be significant elements of the story, and it's all going to come from his fear of losing his father and his fucking disdain course, for allowing people he loves to die. We see in the scene contrast pretty sharply with Kratos' awareness of what's happening here and basically acceptance that this is what's happening, that Fenrir is dying, yes. and that Atreus needs to accept that then, uh, and deal it, with it in a it prompts the soul to enter the knife, which has major implications on the plotline later on. Major All of this gets yep. us to the bear payoff and everything in between. You also have this event being incredibly important to Kratos. Like it's it's a representation of his basic approach to grief, like Fringe just said, as well as uh, Atreus's. And it's consistent with what we know about him, but it's still a refresh. You even have um Mimir about like how it's like, oh man, you gotta you gotta be more opened up. You can't just be so closed off. It's like he's the two opposites at that point in the story, right at the beginning, in terms of how they deal with this sort of thing. This prompts the big blowout, the big conversation that Atreus has with Kratos, because he's like, we gotta start training, we gotta be prepared, and he's like, we can't keep fucking hiding. And then Fenry Fenrir's burial gets to the point where Atreus discovers new abilities and he has to be able to control them. It strains the father-son dynamic, it's, which stretches and reforms throughout the whole game, showcases both characters' res like responses to grief, generates the opening plotline, builds up significant yeah. portions of the, I guess you'd say, deuteragonist plotline being Atreus, close yeah, to halfway yeah, in the game, and then it sets up the major payoff in the third act in several ways for Fenrir. And on top of all that, it's a fucking amazingly acted scene. And it's an event that no yeah. human being really has any issue with relating to. The death of a pet. Most people understand the pain of this. And so knowing who Fenrir is, is not important to the scene. It's knowing who Atreus and Kratos are. And what it'll do going mm -hmm. forward and what it tells you about them. It has so much purpose. And the fact that people feel so much the dog's dying is actually blinding them to seeing what is actually the purpose of that scene. They see the dog dying well, and they I close their brains off. They're like, oh, it's just fucking emotional. It's like, no, no, no. There's so much happening here that's going to play into things later on. We're forgetting that fundamentally the goal of a story is to essentially evoke some level of emotions from you. Like it's, it's, it's trying to get you to feel a certain way at specific times. That's not a bad thing. No. A lot of it comes down to how purposeful it is, how well executed it is. And I would hope that there would be a recognition of the major differences between these two scenes other than dog died, you're meant to be sad about that. Like, yeah. that is some of the most reductive, like, analysis of what was happening in Ragnarok to then compare it to, like, The Last you know of what? Us 2. Maybe like, we're wrong. You gotta, like, re maybe, maybe we're wrong about The Last of Us 2 and there's more going on with that dog that we didn't realize that you can connect in the same way that we did with all those things in Ragnarok, right? But we call mm -hmm. it manipulation in The Last of Us 2 because the dog is fucking wheeled onto the stage to be cute and hopefully make you feel better about Abby. And then it's killed in a QT <laughs> thing by Ellie and it's meant to be sad because you played fetch with it. It's like that's it's, pathetic. It's really not it's really not anything more than that compared to again how much is to be gleamed and drawn from that scene in Ragnarok and everything that it feeds into for the rest of the story. You can't be saying that like these are exactly the same. This shows the well, bias like, of EFAB. It's like what do you mean? The effort. I don't know. I feel like it's showing the bias of you. Like yeah. I don't know what to say. Like <laughs> oh, you're just not damn. recognizing what these are. I'd say that first and foremost, like you should be able to look at basically anything, including things that suck, and try to be able to like present good faith under understanding of what the objectives you can glean from like what's happening in a scene and then to explain you know why you don't think it works or anything like that i feel like that needs to apply here what are they trying to do here beyond just make me feel sad even to downplay like making you feel sad like it's valid to try and extract some emotions from you as a as a player or a viewer yeah i don't know like that's kind well, of hilarious that, that would even be said we talked about this in the stream this is what i'm saying it's like, annoying what? but acceptable when someone says i think that scene sucked explain to me why it's more meaningful than i think it is like okay but to do it after we've explained this twice come on and to then not only bring to bring it up and say ah see this is an example of efap's biases because they like god of war ragnarok so why do you think we like it, it <laughs> yeah i know it's well, it's just like i don't know what's the difference between letting it slide and having a reason for it like in your in your view Watching the comment section slowly turn against the panel with each episode has been an interesting experience. I would say, as someone who keeps an eye on the comments, it's been flowing in all different directions at all times. They have ignored many things they would have otherwise called out, and have called out in many different shows. Such, Such as? as? They've been so effing effusive in their praise for the show 
that when Molly said he still prefers <laughs> the game, parentheses at the beginning of the video, it sounded like a lie, lol. Like going on and on about how your hot wife's twin sister is just to turn around and say, but I still prefer you, la 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 la. Sounds disingenuous. So they're unhappy so would... because they don't believe me when I say I prefer the video no, game. Here's the problem that Maul is going to face. We're talking about the show. Exactly. He doesn't get to sit down and explain in detail like everything he likes about the game because the game is coming in and out of our discussion, you know, while we're going through the show. We're watching the show. Go watch my stream like, on The Last of Us. I'll tell you everything I like about it in there. It's I feel like, like it's so obvious. We're talking about the show. We're not talking about the game as much right now. So like Mauler can't lay out all of the arguments like from beginning to end of the reasons why he prefers the game to the show at any given moment. I have a preference for the the Joel with a tougher wall that's being broken down instead of him being, his wall is softer to begin with. I prefer it being harder to begin with. Again, that's just a preference. It's not, I don't think it makes a character better or worse. I prefer Joel and Ellie's performance in the game to the to the show. The show they've had to sort of convince me while in the, in the game, I, I was into it straight away. So, and that I think I could argue more than just a preference. I prefer how the story's paced in the game than the show. Uh, I'm fine with the show's pacing. I just think the games is better. I'd have to go into more detail to be able to argue that, but I can't right now. I prefer the amount of time I spend with Ellie and Joel in the game. And uh, the fact that it's a game is, is kind of the benefit it gets here, which is a little bit unfair, but hey, that's just the reality of uh, mediums. I get to survive as Ellie and Joel uh, in all of the gameplay, and so it like it can almost run subconsciously in my mind that they've spent a lot of time together and been through a lot of things together, and that can help me bind them in my own mind as well. There's things that happen in the show that don't happen in the game. Like I'm pretty sure Joel doesn't barter with one soldier that just so happens to be the one he bumps into that night. I'm pretty sure that's a change that uh, we were against. Joel's like aimbot in episode five, was it? The, um, uh, that's, that's not that's not like... something anybody everyone pointed that out. I was like, yep, that's not good. Joel like <laughs> didn't take anywhere near the amount of resources from Frank and Bills that everyone would thought to be reasonable. I can't think of many arguments against the fact that he like he only took the rifle and that was it. It's, it's that's really weird. At least that's all I think. He took some tins, but it's just like you'd, you'd think he would have taken more than that. Did they ever try to even distract the clickers in episode two? I think that was something I was I was highlighting. It's like because you get to do it in the games all the time. It's kind of fun. It just seems like something if you're familiar with clickers, which they are, they should know to try throw a, anything across the other side of the room sort of thing it doesn't even get referenced um when tommy for some reason ditches them in episode one when he really didn't need to right that's that's, that's just a yeah, categorically worse was, change yeah that was i remember that we felt that the scene as it played out with uh joel being confronted by the the soldier just played out in a way that seemed a bit more awkward than uh than it did in the game yeah yeah we, we... like sense of place and the slope and everything like it just didn't flow as, as much we just talked about earlier how it would have been better to have address the uh the whole like he didn't talk to him on the radio anymore like that that that's something they added in and then didn't i think uh, do enough to work with um the tess's choice to use the lighter instead of a grenade which would have been like yeah, just a way better like... fucking choice way more consistent joel didn't take anything in that building right when he when, it, when there was loads of guns and ammo on the floor and he didn't take any of it he just had what he had with him which is another just like what the fuck are you doing uh this, these things like I, I don't know if necessarily i want to say all of these things but i don't think these things happen in in the game. Do you remember when they replayed the the the, the clip of him oh, and Sarah? Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. It's that like that was that was, that was a bit embarrassing. You don't need to do that. Like... Joel didn't take the shotgun that he got off that kid that he killed. It's just because there's so many of these things that have been listed. Uh, <laughs> as part of Yeah, part well of and stuff. there you go. All of those things I'm pretty sure I either consider to be lying, non existent though. or better lying. in the game. You're fucking and then lying, I th dude. the funny part is I didn't need all those references, I don't think, because I've already highlighted the primary draw of this story is those two main characters. And I think the performances and the relationship are superior in the game. I need to see this through to the end to be able to say if I think that definitively. But the thing is, I, I don't think that it's like this wide gap between them. I just prefer the game. Well, because if I were to say right now, I haven't made my mind up. I'm basically waiting until the end of the season to see what I think overall in terms yeah. of which I think is better. So, like, if someone asked me which do you think is better, I think my answer right now would be, I don't know, get back to me in a couple of weeks, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll figure it out. You know, there are things to be critical of that are, like, in the show and the game, just to, because this, this, I'm kind of coming back to the whole, like, we're apparently so hyper-biased in favor of the show. The fact that the luck of the Raiders turning up at the uni at the same time as they did, it's like, that's, I think we that's pretty lame. Yeah. yeah. We're pretty fucking hilariously lucky that the sniper can't shoot for shit. It's dark and he has shit aim, nobody's gonna kill me. I know, you could be like, oh, it's just an old <laughs> dude, right? And it's like, I mean, that's still lucky as fuck, man. They all could have died. They didn't know he was there. He could have tagged any one of those four, but he didn't.
I think when they decide to like move through the city, they just commit to that building because they want to get a higher view of stuff. When they're like, oh shit, it's probably infested. And it's, I think Rags was like, is there no other option in this city? Is that it? It's like, well, we got our set piece to do. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and how like only one raider attacked Joel. In that, in that sequence we said, I remember us saying, these are all off the top of my head. I can't remember. We've pointed out way more flaws than this, but I, I'm, I'd have to go through all the episodes. The point is, this is kind of annoying. I would say that we categorize as best we can based on everything we're seeing. And we're doing all of this like off the fucking cuff, live reaction straight away. This isn't, we all get to watch this twice or three times, write a script, correct it over and have it proofed by friends or something. And, the, and I think the best thing we can do is then check out people making arguments in response and that's what I feel like we're doing, and some of them are good, some of them aren't so good, I don't know. The best people come up with is that we're biased because we like the show, which is a really weird thing to start pulling, but they've only started pulling that in, like after the first four or five episodes coverage, because if anyone had said anything about our feelings for the show, it would have been negative. So it feels weird that that's the choice of bias, when obviously if we get to uh, motivation mine in the opposite direction, what are we going to say? You all hate it because of Last of Us too. Mm -hmm. You hate it because of Neil Druckmann. Constructing a motivation for you is way easier for us than it is for you about us. Like you have to say that we like it too much. Like, oh, okay. Well, you don't like it too much. <laughs> like, there you go. You don't like it enough. If you want us to join you in that horny hatred, you gotta give us arguments and they gotta be good. They can't be just, you're being too nice. I just hope we get stuff that's a bit more substantive, which we had plenty of in this episode, and I'm going to grab them as soon as I see them. It's a defense against criticism, but I said I like the game more. Do I just lie and say that mm -hmm. I don't so that they don't think I'm being disingenuous? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the better scenario, do? I don't know. Nothing. People are still bewildered by the idea of something being properly adapted and are struggling to move on from the mindsets of previous worst shows to call out imaginary criticisms. Yeah, I think that's kind of mm. true. You got to assume there's at least someone here who's a little angry at this IP, and that's what's fueling a lot of the criticism, right? Maybe somebody? <laughs> the show has a lot of things to praise, though, so their praise is pretty understandable. Well, I would hope that the understandable praise is understandable, as in, like, we're not trying to praise it for no reason, or desperately, we're trying mm -hmm. to praise things that we spot that we think are good. So, you know, yep. let us know if we fuck that up. Maybe they just missed those things. It's easier to miss flaws in things that you like. And I think that would be best accentuated by the crew being spottable in the show. None of us saw that. Probably wouldn't have seen it on fucking five viewings. But there it was. And I'm happy to be like, oh shit, that's a fuck up. But obviously the scale rises and there are other things that we don't necessarily spot that uh, can be drastic What's in terms of flaws. Actual? If you don't like this, you're a toxic fan. That's how this EFAP sounds to me. Bit of a oh, reductionist oh, view. <laughs> I don't know why you're trying to almost couch it in the lens of, like, the way that showrunners will talk about, I don't know, like, fans who disagree with the... I assume he might be referencing when, like, Rag said, if you think that the acting's bad, you're coping, or something like that. And I'd just be like, we never called anyone toxic for not liking the show, and nor did we ever mean that to be the case. You're hearing things that aren't quite there. You're allowed to not like something, that's fine. We want better discussion, all right? So, do away with this shit, the whiny shit. I don't want any of this. Talk about the arguments. All right, they're better, they're more interesting. Yeah. And when you say that we're making, when we're screwing up, just put in one example so that we can at least latch onto that. And please don't choose no, the we, death we of do a like dog in God of War Ragnarok no. after all the time we, we spent explaining it. That. You, you got to abandon the dog, what, all right? Don't do it. Uh, and so I wanted ends. to say, like, I don't recall any of you referring to any buddy is a toxic fan regardless of whether they had a good argument or not and whenever they do have a good argument you're i find that you're quite happy to respond to it and engage with it that's you know, the goal and um, acknowledge whether it's a good point or not very do you remember um there was a there was a person who loved last of us one and there was like a clip that went around the internet when last of us two came out where he was once joel died he like ejected the game and chopped it up with the scissors and he was like, <laughs> he was like tearing up or whatever. He was very fucking furious, personally pissed off. And that's the thing I recognize with a lot of media, you will get very personally invested. And so the residue of the fiery insult people had felt from The Last of Us 2 is just bleeding all over this game. And whenever there's a reference to Last of Us 2 or a change that seemingly seems in favor of it, people are ready to fucking pounce on this thing. And if yeah. you have people like us being like, you should calm down, this stuff is actually pretty good, we can come across as uh, crazies to them, which, well, all right, that's something but <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. Whatever feelings and baggage you might be coming into it with owing to, you know, attachment to the series, which I mean, most of us here have. Mm -hmm. If we can do it, you can certainly do it. 
Because, I mean, and especially here, because we've got such a mixed bag, right? Because uh, Mola uh, and I have a lot of experience with all of the games. Mola Rags and I don't like The Last of Us 2. John likes The Last of Us 2. It's like a real, it's a, it's a real amalgamation of different perspectives and experience with the series. So I certainly don't feel like what you're getting here is an echo chamber. At the very least, it wouldn't be an echo chamber. Or you wouldn't expect it to be one based on all of the perspectives that are feeding into it. Yes. And however this was going to turn out, like I came on here, I was happy to. But I expected that I was going to be like the one liking this show and that you guys probably maybe wouldn't care for it. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I just thought like, oh, uh, they didn't like Last of Us 2. Maybe they won't like this. Maybe they'll screw this up. But it's been a pleasure to realize that we're kind of on the same page, I think, with this show. And if we weren't, that that would be okay too. But it's, it's well, I, guess I just think it's a cool that similar, uh, we're all like giving sort of values with storytelling and yeah, different arguments. Yeah. The whole premise we're all of giving our, credit to the praise where it's deserved, I think. The whole mm -hmm. premise of this yeah. IP of EFAP is to just break things down and find the things that are there and then draw them to conclusions and other people hopefully can see them or find flaws in them or see things that bolster them and then they talk back and forth and reach some kind of conclusion. Like I said, depending on how, how charged the media is, because like I said, this is not our first controversial opinion. Like I said, it was really weird last time that they referenced TLJ when it's like, Man, you, can you think of all the crazy <laughs> things that have been said between now and TLJ in terms of hot takes from us? Like, oh yeah, and that was a hot take, by the way, TLJ. So saying TLJ is bad, that was that was one of the most polarized discussions on media ever. Uh, yeah, mm. it really was. Times are changing, but also they don't really, in a way. And the Last of Us yeah, TV like, show is just like the next General in the line. Said. But I still think it's very good. So uh, let me know if there's things I've missed, uh, or maybe things that you think were very erroneous about the arguments we just made, or we'll go on to make about whatever episode we're dealing with this time. Because um, I enjoy checking them out. A preamble, what we've come to understand from different, like, next time-ons or assumptions about the structure of the show. The way The Last of Us game happened was that... Uh, you know, it all released and then it got a DLC, and the DLC took place between two parts of the game. And that remain, I guess, relatively a spoiler-free. I wouldn't have assumed you'd think Joel would die in that moment, Rags, so... Especially with you know exactly when and where he actually dies. <laughs> the point of the game is that you deal with Ellie for a while, and then uh, Joel does wake back up after she's given him some help. And so they show us in the DLC how she managed to at least begin getting him back to health. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get flashbacks with her life before the Fireflies, before Joel and, and stuff, uh, with a certain character. And it looks like that's what they're going to be doing this episode. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we're dealing with the same format as the Frank and Bill one. It's probably going to be full focus on uh, Ellie's Frank history. Frank and Bill. Yeah. But that's my guess. The way they did it with Frank and Bill was a starting and ending scene with Ellie and Joel, so I wonder if they'll do that for this as well. Um, yeah. Well, the way they've been building these stories is that the story in her history is going to relate directly with Joel, and uh, I would imagine that it's pretty easy to draw it from the game anyway, but we'll see how the show does it, I suppose. Fungus growing. A dog could smell these credits. Or could it? Is it the Probably. wounds that it smells? We went over this. I don't know. It's been telling people it can detect it, but really it doesn't. It just gets rid of people it doesn't like. Yeah. I think that uh, we are doing the same format of seeing what's happening in the present day story. Right, because we're in snowy times. Yes. Not to say that this is the first time there's been snow in the history of this world, but, you know, <laughs> but there's the blood there, so... Look, until know. we see anything that contradicts that information for you, we will we will maintain <laughs> that this is the first snow on Earth in this... In this How will IP. they deal with this? What's all this white stuff? That would be pretty Towards fucking weird, family. wouldn't it? The first time that happens in all of human history. Really cold water. They put snow on that horse. And he was like, I'm gonna get rid of it. He's like, yeah. I think I've had Animal enough of abuse. this. So this is already different. He's awake. You gotta help me. Come on. Leave. Shut up, Joe. Take the gun. Joe, shut the fuck up! You go. You go to town. You go. She'll probably go, but then she'll go grab something. I don't think she's intending to leave Joel at this point. I think she's just like, so I'll go, either. but I'm just going to go get a first aid. Oh, no, I'm, I'm I'm suggesting that the, the payoff will be she doesn't, of course. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a surprise I, I, to anybody. I'm just saying, I don't think even for a moment she was thinking, like, I'm going to just leave Joel I'm willing here. to believe there's 10% even of her brain being like, if I leave, get on the horse now, I can get back to... 
the Tommy people and live a nice, happy life? Do I really have any chance of saving Joel here? Th that might be a little, little whisper in there. Back. Sure, that's fair. Look up your pace. I'm not running doubles again because oh no, bully has... character. Is this the house You're lights friend, flickering right now? She... In the gym? Yeah, I like guess you'd... so. Maybe the power is really spotty. Yeah. I think it's consistent here. That's a nice detail, <clears throat> yeah. She got hit in the face! That's called abuse. Captain Kwong. I think he was in The Expanse. What's going on? Yeah, I think that's what I recognize him from. It's funny because I recognize him and I'm like, what from? And it could be that, yeah. Two pass ahead of you. A mug path. You keep acting like you're grown, so you get the life. <laughs> Up at dawn, walk the streets, walk the wall. You take shit orders from your patrol leader, who'll probably be Bethany. Oof. And that'll be your life from now until you catch a bullet from a firefly, or fall drunk off a roof, or get your hair caught in a moving tank tread. Dang, they, they have There's the other cut your hair. You oh, up. look, it's the Naughty Dog! Poor. We're cool in the summer, we're warm in the winter, and best of all, when you're an officer, you get to tell the Bethanies of the world exactly where to shove it. See, you can be a bully to bullies. Yeah, that's right. Why but you can work within the system to bully people. Yeah. You could become a Kwong all of I your own. This is uh, Fedra she's with, right? And this is yes. cool. Yeah, to have a guy be like, we're what keeps things sane and cool and in order and people protected. It would fall to chaos without us. Like, yay, yeah. Fedra aren't strictly assholes. <laughs> Or not. Regardless of, yeah, like that he has some conviction. You want to take the mug way or the Kwong way? Go the Kwong way. Go Kwong. Because obviously there are Fedra outposts or locations where they all went fucking nuts, apparently, like Kansas City. Well, yeah, because you imagine the amount of coordination just deteriorates over time. They start to become more yeah. independent, more I guess. Well, some of them, yeah. Don't Definitely give her the Walkman. Oh my she has to earn it with Kwong points. You have to turn in <laughs> 200 Kwong points and you get- You don't just get a Walkman, you get your Walkman back. For every individual yeah, piece of trash she picks a... up from the floor, that's one Kwong point, so... It wouldn't, take it wouldn't too long. be a Walkman because of the 2003, right? That was when the apocalypse started. <laughs> I mean, she can... <laughs> no, no iPods yet, I guess. Yeah, is it? I don't actually remember like, the portable CD timeline. players, right? Uh, well, or, iPods right? might have been like right around the beginning there. Yeah, they were definitely portable CD players. So I had a yeah. walking man. Did you guys have a walking man? I did I not. Did. Oh, I, had a, I had a little CD the, player. Uh, further reinforcing all of the space stuff with all these posters. Oh, yes. The moon, science space. fiction films. Hmm. This, this is my place. corner. That's your corner. You stay on your side of the room. You know, it's got, if you could see music by uh, Jerry Goldstein there for Inner Space, it'd be so funny if they had, like, there was a name in that credit they didn't notice was someone who's worked on this too. And they'd be like, does that, is that a problem for continuity for canon? <laughs> I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I'm only 10 Kwong points short of a CD player. Go collect some trash. Be a good yeah. citizen. You can every pound of trash, you get a Kwong point. Every pound? I said for every individual item, but now you've made oh, it that's, much more that's difficult. Oh, that's pretty excessive. This is a world full of trash. We gotta. Yeah, I mean, he's Kwong giving points, a man. for two hundred Kwong points, she gets back her Walkman. That's not costing him much of anything. I know, but it's not about him. So I'm saying the good stuff costs you like ten thousand Kwong points. Ooh, yeah, like, but that that'd be really good stuff, though. He has his little kiosk, and he's got like Kwong a big point. fluffy teddy bear that's like five thousand Kwong Kwong, Kwong no, points. That <laughs> That would be crazy. Riley? Ow. Ow. I landed on my hip. What the hell? I thought I was bitten. I know. It was kind of awesome. Riley! Where have you been? What the fuck is wrong with you sneaking up on me like that? It was a joke, okay? I thought it would work better. You're not gonna kill me, are you? I haven't seen you, and I don't even know how long. 45 days? Well, 46, technically. I thought you were dead. You've been gone for three weeks. I should fucking stab you. No, I appreciate your mercy. All this time, I thought you were dead. Yeah. Here. Look. I'm fine. I just ran away for a bit, that's all. If you're going through some shit, you're supposed to, I don't know, talk to your best friend about it. No way. Still no roommate? I had to sleep under Liz for three years, and you know how bad that girl smelled. Who gave you the black eye? Tell me where you were. Give me a name and I'll fuck him up. It was Bethany and I already fucked her up. 
Where were you? You're a firefly. <laughs> you still have it up. I joined the fireflies. Oh, fuck you. I'm not in the mood for this, Riley. I'm really not in the mood. What? What are you doing? I'm making sure I don't get caught with a firefly in my room. Relax. There are no soldiers on the entire floor. You're a firefly? Jesus. I told you I'd fucking do it. Talking about liberating the QC is not the same as... Fuck, where did you even... Slow Here, congrats. Hey. Are we cool? Are we cool? Come with me for a few hours and have the best night of your life. No. I disappeared and you're mad. Yeah. And... I owe you an explanation. Let's get out of here and I'll tell you all about it. It's 2 a.m. and in a few hours I have drills where we learn to kill fireflies. It's almost morning and I have military drills. You know, where we learn how to kill fireflies. Get dressed. Turn around. You're so weird about that. Put some pants on and let's go. If you're thinking about hanging in the park, we can't go there anymore. It's a new patrol what they just put in. Well, we're not going to the park. I'm so dumb. Oh, come on. When have we ever gotten into trouble? Guards? No. Because Fetcher's fucking stupid. Ready? This better be good. Probably not the best it's joke, stupid. but hey. This is, yeah, this is why you spend your Quang points frivolously. Save you do them. Not save, you don't save or invest your Quang you points. Dead. You're supposed to, I don't know, talk to your best friend about it. Yeah. You can get you can get therapy for a thousand Kwong points. Man, you are not letting that Kwong like one go, are you? It was Bethany, and I already fucked her up. Oof. Yeah. Where were you? I stole her lunch money. Her Kwong points. You're a firefly. Jesus. I told you Does the gun prove it? I guess so. Do you guys remember? She's from Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, that's where I know that film. Oh, from. okay. That film's really good. It's an excellent film. She's really, it's really great. It's definitely not a one out of ten. I can't tell if you guys are being serious. <laughs> you not? Is that a good? Is it a good? Film? We have an EFAP oh. movies on it. You can go check it out if you want. Yeah, it's a, it's great. For what? Oh, is she getting a new dress? I don't like this dress. I'm gonna get a new one. I'm not finished yet. Oh, she's turned herself to ribbons. <laughs> this is what it's like to chew five gum. <laughs> the movie. Oh my god! What the fuck is that? <laughs> <Her new salad. laughs> oh my goodness! Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 Top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh, it's so weird. Aha. Uh -huh. We're not going to the park. <gasps> Where are we going? Hey. Where are we going? I don't know. Should I trust you? Of course you should. With your life. Dweeb. But you're a firefly. Which means I cannot trust you. Your trust has been revoked. Guards? No. Because Fedra's fucking stupid. Be nice to Fedra. They make the trains run on time. That's true. Not that Man, that was real close. Okay. Rocky start. That was very close. I guess that's just how it would go, right? You'd hear it before you see it, so. Yeah. Man, it'd be real awkward if the car just, like, reversed back and then yeah. like, Or it stopped. Right back and I saw something. Stopped at the, the alley and just went, We can see you! What are you doing? You put Carolyn You can't fight everything and everyone. You can pick and what's important. Oh. Are they teaching you this at Fight everything, division? everywhere, everyone, kind of. everything yeah. all at once. Fuck I know that movie. Carol. Fuck Carol. Fucking Carol. Yeah, I hate Carol. Carol. Carol should have used her Quang points to get a fucking clue. Wow. Firefly lights are better. <laughs> wow. Yes. One point for the anarchists. We prefer freedom fighters. <laughs> How many floors? Like two. Like two? So two. 
Well, three's like two. Similar so it could to be two. Three. Okay. Could be one. Like a one floor building, you'd be like, it's like two. two and that would be accurate. Like you. I was just tagged in the oh, this seven? <laughs> a seven's like a two. Oh, shit. Oh. Is he dead? Yeah. He doesn't is, look is alive. No. No, this, this guy wasn't here yesterday. Oh, so we should leave. Well, I mean, there's no reason to assume he's infected. Well, even then, like if people have been through here, or if the cover's blown, or the place has been found. Well, it's just a dead guy. You think this is going to be like how she got bit or something? Oh, no, we're not going to be doing not, that until not here. end of the episode, yeah. probably. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is the... I don't mean this guy specifically. Oh, right, because you... The answer, Rags, is yes, yes, yes. I don't fucking know how she got bit. You're going to find out. Take happened. those pills. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he's a what? fat boy. Bye. <laughs> he's, a, he's a chunky boy. I guess because of the, the water leakage, I guess you could probably argue. That, that just seems funny to me. I don't know. It does. Especially when they took the bottle away. It weighed less. <laughs> it's like his spirit from the other way. He's like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> he he's didn't like, enjoy the company. He had to go. He only paid me for three minutes. Bum, 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 bum. Remember, drinking when you're underage is bad. That's right. We do not condone this kind of reckless behavior from the youth of tomorrow. We, unlike Naughty Dog, do not intend to encourage underage children to drink. That's right. Some things should only be reserved for the sanctity of adulthood, like drinking, pill popping, or monopoly. And prostitution, and monopoly. They kind of made me swear not to let other people handle my sidearm. Not to handle my sidearm because I'm such a fucking firefly. <laughs> hey, this is what we call peer pressure. I don't know. Here, you take the booze, I'll take the gun. It's very irresponsible of you both. I started dating some Firefly dude and was like, ah, oh, it's, it's cool, I think I'll be a terrorist. Yep, that's it. We're getting married. <laughs> Would you kiss me really, under the uh, rusty 7-Eleven sign? Okay. At least you gave up on making the Quang points joke. What? Why? How would that? Would you kiss? Well, you think you could trade Quang points for kisses? The Quang don't roll that way. Why did you even bring up the points again, Molo? You knew what was going to happen. I did. Well, that's why I did. I, def I defended the Quang points. Quang points are no joke. Do you want in? That's it. No word initiations. Nope. I said yes, and now I'm a firefly. That and seems very insecure. Everything. Not like they, not like insecure, like people are insecure, but as in like not secure. I get what you mean. Like it's very quick. I assume. What is the betting process? It, well, like? the implication of his story though is that they've known about it for a while. Right. Presumably they've done checks on it. Well, yeah, you'd figure that if they've lasted this long, that they would have a, a pretty thorough system. Oh boy, it's like Uncharted, doing some jumping across rooftops. I was like, gonna say it's like Kenobi. Oh, yeah! No! Uh, yeah! No, Call this it's platforming elements in the same way that these games often have stealth elements. Yeah. Oh boy, the Atomic Heart platform oh, was actually, great. Maybe it's, it's more like uh, Assassin's Creed 2. It's like Venice rooftops, but it's Boston. Or like any game where you walk across buildings. That's right. Uh, Fireflies blowing up the storage depot didn't help. Propaganda yeah. Bullshit. Yeah? Propaganda, huh? More? Not when civilians are around. That's propaganda bullshit. Aha! It's okay you don't know everything. I agree to disagree. <sighs> I feel like you'd be easy to see up there. The mall? Yeah, pretty much. You out of your fucking mind? They sealed that place off for a reason. It's full of infected. If it's sealed off, then why isn't it sealed off? Good question. So it's not sealed off? <laughs> and so the conclusion is... Bedra lads be using it for fun, or they don't want people to know? Is that the idea? I guess there's a lot of things that you could infer from that. Well, they should still be pretty fucking careful, I guess. <coughs> Hopefully they will be. Yeah. Ew. It's been exposed for a few years. So, since Slime, that yay. connected that block up to the grid, this place got connected too. Not that they know. Oh. They, they wouldn't know? Why wouldn't they know that? <laughs> Ow. Pay attention. Yeah, don't shine lights on my eyes. Especially since you can find out just by taking a casual glance. Yeah. And why wouldn't they have searched this place if it's literally in their own city? Yeah. And also, if it's full of infected and, and not sealed off. Yeah, that's like what I mean. I, I'm I getting a lot of information here that's not seeming quite right. Like, so what it's full of infected and sealed off, but the federal people have never been down here and they also don't know there's electricity feeding into here. Because, like, it seems like it could be a massive problem if it does have infected and it's in the QZ and they're not keeping an eye on it actively. And it's a, it's a mall down here, right? 
yeah, resources. Yeah, I'm sure that I mean, plus the, the Fedra and Kansas City kept the infected from coming out. So assuming that would just well, my, be yeah. like anything that you do. The only argument I could buy as to why Fedra aren't here is because it's filled with infected, but clearly it isn't. Yeah, because otherwise there would surely be a lot of utility in, in a place like this. And especially now that all the lights are on, surely this might attract the attention of Fedra. The lights. We're fine. You saw outside. It's like a big bunker. No one can see shit but us. I just don't understand yeah. how they could conclude Fedra don't know that electricity fed into here. That's just weird. Well, I mean, of course they would, right? They just understand how the grid works. <laughs> Most people would understand how the grid would work, I guess. I would have thought. Was the in the game? So wh where was the like the, sh the shops? Was that in the QZ as well? I think so. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Okay. I mean, it's it's funny because all they needed to do was say, yeah, it's sealed off and it's uh, I don't know, going to be checked out eventually by Fedra more than likely, so we can have our fun with it before they do that or something. Yeah. Awesome. Electric stairs. Stairs that move. Can you believe it? Oh, and they're it's playing. Aha! Uh -huh. They're playing uh -huh. the song. Uh -huh. yeah. And also, right. I, I like that. I like that she thinks that escalators are cool. They are kind of cool anyway. Cool. <laughs> they are, but especially if you haven't really seen them before. Yeah. You've never automated travel. I wonder if they'd work after twenty years of being not hooked up or something. Hmm. What's well, the thing, right? Is this place been untouched for twenty years, or no, people no. ransacked it? Or? Well, yeah, it, it probably was. Like, it probably hasn't been for twenty years, right? If it's in the QZ. Well, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. This, this, my understanding of this place and how it relates to Fedra is very <laughs> strange. Yeah, right now I'm just yeah. Because like, if it has been cleared out, then why would are they telling people there's infected here to scare them off? But then that doesn't match the whole. They don't but know that electricity is well, coming here. But also, to what end? Why would you scare them off? Like, what does it matter? I don't know, yeah. Is it just because it's like a big area that would be difficult to patrol and maintain? Because is it of because the... they're super fascist and they don't want people having fun? I guess yeah, the best argument I can make allowed. is that I imagine that overseeing a shopping center would be tough because of all of the hallways and all of the individual shops and then all of the rooms within those shops. Like, it'd be hard to keep track of. As much as I guess I'd agree, it's still more space. I yeah, that's I get that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's kind of a steel man. I'm not I'm not sure that I'm satisfied with that. Looks uncomfortable. Yep. Well <laughs> it's not comfortable at what? all. And sometimes they are kinda comfy. It is very comfy. I have to say. Things remembered. Gap. Oh, they could fit through that gap. Give me your hand. Might be carousel time. Come on. Blood brothers. We're blood brothers. She just thunks, hits something. She's not actually really like guiding her well. She just hits a pole. Just one of them 300 pits here and she just walks her into it. Now uh, bye bye. There she is. Oh my goodness. The carousel. It's the carousel. Now I'm almost curious as to why they wouldn't want to make sure this place isn't sucking up energy. Like, they'd want to close it down. Especially in a place that is, yeah, resource scarce. Yeah. All of a uh, sudden, an entire they... mall getting electricity, sucking it from There's the grid. And they'd have to know out. about it. Yeah. I want to ride the horses. Can't believe that they used to drive <clears throat> spikes through the middle of horses and coat them in plastic. Yeah, that was real cruel of them. To, We've yeah. moved on since then, okay? That was past mistakes. They had different We're morals back progressive then. Progressive people now, yeah. This is before the horse uprising of '92. You're drunk. No, yeah, not yet. No, we should we should stay sober. We shouldn't drink and drive. You shouldn't drink and ride. That you guy, that I that guy died from drinking drink. that, you know. No. Oh my God, I can't. Uh, I want to ride the pony. <laughs> this is cute and all. I hope something happens soon, though. It's a little. Where's um, the zombies? A little slow on events. Yeah. I would even say yeah, it's a little bit slow of... on conversations, too. It's mostly just them having fun. Yeah, just sort of hanging right. out. There should be a bloater on one of the horses right behind them. He's like, rawr! <laughs> He's riding it like, <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> Yay, horsies. Did you really leave because you actually think you could liberate this place? Don't say it like it's some Mom. type of fantasy, Ellie. They've done it in the other QZs. Yeah, we could do that, too. We're like the future. You know, She's saying do it from the inside. We could be running things. You could be running things. You know what Quan gave me? <gasps> Points? Sewage detail. No, sewage detail. Oh. Uh. Standing guard while people shovel shit. That's what they think of me. 
Why? Well, someone's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to do it. First what off, you, you like, get this whole standing around well, all I mean, day holding uh, a gun is I mean, probably... She doesn't, she doesn't want to do it. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Hey man, we've all got a pitch in, okay? You you don't even have to do that. You I'm, just I stand guess there watching. That she, uh, I'm, I just want to hear more of her reasoning, I guess. I would have gotten it back then, too, you know? You know, you're the one thing I miss from that fucking place. Because I would, I would assume that in terms of her motivation, that might have just been the thing that made her go like, ah, you know no. what, actually, I believe enough in what the fireflies, I'll do that. Rather than well, so, you know what? I guess the she weird part of me is like, what? that's what they think of me, and it's like, I mean, do you, what, what, what are you like scoring low on your like grades, and that they need? It's not like they hate you, I assume. Well, I mean, maybe it's they don't want her to be like an officer, right? They don't because maybe they don't believe that she is, uh, I guess, as in lockstep. I think that would like, be a better reason. I just didn't. I wasn't sure if that's what she was going for, as opposed to I just don't uh, like that job. Yeah, I get you. Like if they put her on sewage detail because she's clearly a a, a bit of a wild card. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see why that would annoy you. Wait. <laughs> on yourself? That's not how you don't. You're, what's oh, your left hand doing? I think she was trying to put both on her head. Didn't really look like that. Who messes that up? Okay, yeah. Get out. Okay, okay, sorry. That's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool rabbit. He is. He is a very. Oh, look at him. Look he's wearing him. sunnies as well. He's a very cool rabbit. He's affirming people's didn't they, confidence. Didn't they not print in the game? Oh my god, I can't believe it's actually gonna work. <laughs> I know. Hit me try. <sighs> okay. Oh, come on! Fuck you! Maybe if you put it up here? <sighs> oh. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> what just happened? I think we broke it. <laughs> I think we did too. They gave it to him in the show, huh? I think they well, break the machine in the game. Out, oh, it's just taking to... time before it fades in, right? Yeah. Or is it not? I think, I think it's, it's just, just a, think an old 20 year old machine that's been oh, okay. yeah. They really should replace the ink in that machine. I don't know what they're thinking. Yeah, I mean, that's no, the main. Lack of the management of the shopping center. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, this place really is a huge drain, isn't it? Is it, it an entire- Whoa! An entire <laughs> wor working arcade? Oh yeah, because remember she saw the arcade in, um, in the- in the place that they stopped over at. Uh, she saw outside of Boston. Uh, a cabinet, Mortal Kombat yeah. 2. Yeah, which I think she had a poster for in her room as well. In the game, so that's, she can that's right, play. Yeah. Mortal Kombat 2. And then Kombat Tetris, too, yeah. and maybe and then Street Fighter 2. Yeah, look uh, at all these arcade games. I think they had a fictional Frogger. game in- Woo! In the game, they had like the where she plays as someone called yeah, Angel Knives and the license thing, right? Yeah, the the interesting thing about that is like it's clearly Mortal Kombat, but like not Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. I Hard. guess they got Mortal Kombat for this though. Oh, Daytona! You guys remember USA. Daytona? Oh yeah, yeah Daytona USA. Yeah. yeah. Got to insert coins. I'll just cheat your way into this stuff. You got any Quang points? Wow! Now he's doing it. <laughs> it's making a comeback. I'm gonna man, I'm, I'm taking it back. <laughs> I'm bring, I'm, I'm bringing back Wong points. That lucky that that's the way that it is. Did someone already break it? Oh, apparently she spent an hour breaking it open the day. Oh, before. okay. That's a well, lot of Wong points. This. She planned this whole, uh, this whole day out. Rahas. Oh, Rahas they're, they're gonna play Mortal Kombat. That's yeah, that's Mortal Kombat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is 2023, like in our world. So they could have just found an old abandoned arcade and just like fixed the. Quasi fixed it up. Well, there's a couple of changes I would have made. I, I can't buy that this place is drawing that much energy and that Fedra don't give a shit. And that nobody yeah. cares. This yeah. is like a bunch of working arcade machines and all that sort of stuff. How do I play? Smash the buttons. There's so many of them. I, now, you know what? I, th I don't know that that is how you play Mortal Kombat. Smash the buttons? Yeah, button mashers always win. I was going to say, button mashers is everything. Yeah. No skill whatsoever. <laughs> wow, you got fucking wrecked, loser. Yeah, she got. Yeah. yeah like, Flawless, wow. You didn't hit her I think, once? I think you can get by mashing buttons. I had this exact game for Sega CD. <laughs> you can definitely yeah. get by, well, you, but... You can get by. It's just, you know, <laughs> that high-level play. Yeah. Do a fatality. Do it. She knows it. <laughs> Good old Mortal Kombat. bones in. Well, he turned sucked him into a all pile of him bones. in and then sucked the bones out. Oh, yeah, she freed his skeleton. Yeah. Now he can be free to no explore the world. No longer in his flash mech. I'm free! So she's been there a few times, which means that it's, I guess it's been like this for long enough that it wasn't like just a couple of days. There's another yeah. part of it that could help believe it, right? Having it be active it just for like a half hour, hour even, but it's been longer oh, than that. This is, a, this is an ominous This is our spooky this shot. Is 
Yeah. This is our scary shot. Whose POV is this? Is it someone noticing the bright ass lights? That'd be oh no, spooky music anything, and spooky right? lighting. Every story has an S. It's funny for a moment that you're like, what's wrong with Rebecca? Why is Rebecca the doll a bad thing? Is that are we doing Mithrigan? <laughs> That's a Zambi. Yeah. I live! Looks pretty good though. Yeah, money's worth. She has a gun though. I feel like you're gonna need more than one clicker. But I'm not sure, because the game Unless has a lot of them. Unless he up on them, maybe? Maybe they're so... Uh, yeah, that could work. Oh no, I got stabbed. Oh, come on. Next thing. I have to wake up and make my bed soon. So, I'll be here tomorrow. I got you a gift. <gasps> what what could it be? It does like since yeah. I don't need them anymore, oh, I'm just gonna give you all my quang points. Better. Oh, it's a zombie. In the games, it is water pistols or water guns. Uh, yes. Nacho, macho, nacho. Is this where you've been staying? Mostly. So she's actually like this is her like place. Shut up. made a second. Oh, that'd be the jerk book that she, uh, that she had. Right, yes. yes. She had part one, and now this is part two. Uh, well, no, two. but when she was with Joel, right? That would have been part two, is what I'm saying. Yeah, what I'm saying is she had part one in this episode on her yeah, desk. Yeah, I saw that. So that's why this is, like, yeah. a meaningful <laughs> gift, I guess. How does a computer get drunk? It takes screenshots. That's not bad. What are screenshots? I don't actually know. Okay. <laughs> oh, they don't know what screenshots are? Oh... These are pipe bombs. These are not good. You shouldn't have these. No, they're not mine. <laughs> I swear. They belong to the chef. These kill, kill people. <laughs> it's to kill buildings. The evil buildings. Oh! Well, it still doesn't account for Fedra. Yeah, that's true. I guess I'm just like, that's that's something. Like They were putting pipe bombs in the tacos. You. You're just some new scrub girl. No, no, Were you no, going to no, blow me up with your little pipe here. bombs? You made bombs, Ellie, but I already said you. like you sort of did that before, but now it's confirmed. They're sending me to a post in the Atlantic UC. Tonight's my last night in Boston. Subway. Eat fresh, which is not going to happen. It's very unlikely that you will here. be mm -hmm. eating fresh at the local subways at the mall. But it says eat fresh. That's true. They have become and liars. <laughs> Sandwich sellers and liars. They go together. In like between a those subway. two buns is nothing but broken promises, <laughs> low calorie lies. And I wanted to say goodbye. This is the music that plays in the confrontation it's between Joel and Ellie, but they didn't play this song in that scene. So I do I'll really like the track. I do really like this track. Hope nothing bad happens in here. This creepy ass hallway. No, this yeah. is the nice hallway. I think all that's happening is she's making, yeah, that she's making a choice to go back. Poor loser. Didn't even commit. No spine. It said ominous music is playing. Riley? <laughs> what the fuck? That's kind of messed up. Surprise. That's the second ill advised joke you've done. The fifth wonder. Give me the book. Give me the book. I came back for you. You said it was my gift. I'm not leaving without yeah. it. <laughs> you did say it was, yeah. And traded no it in for no maybe backspace. some... Quang points. All of a sudden you're alive. And you give me this night. And now you're leaving again. Forever. To join some cause I don't even think you understand. You don't know everything. You don't know what it was like to have a family. To belong. And I want that again. Yeah, but they're so kind of a crazy a family who blow things up. What I think they are, but they chose me. I mattered to them. Mm. Mm. You're my best friend. You're my best friend. And I'll miss you. Where's that zombie? <laughs> if I remember correctly in the game, she says she's going to be leaving, and then Ellie convinces her not to, right? I remember someone's convinced. Oh, werewolf. I just, I can't remember who. Like, whether it's Ellie to go to the Fireflies or with or Riley to stay with 
Fedra. I think Riley says she's coming in to go, and then Ellie's like, she just says don't, and then she's like, okay. And she yeah, she takes off her um, her tag, her like Firefly dog tag. Oh right, okay. Put on your furry costume and dance. Oh, well, I'm guessing that they might be trying to have this be different to further reinforce maybe Ellie's desire to you know help the Fireflies and follow through. Well, yeah, they seem to be presenting the struggle between Fedra and Fireflies to be very balanced in this show world, or at least more yeah, balanced yeah. it feels, and that it shouldn't be outright agreed on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Why'd they put masks on? I, I can't, can't see like, the emotions. I feel like they go through those. I don't know. I don't know what the tops are made out of. Well, they what are in those? If it's like um, valuables, I can imagine that glass is strong as fuck. It looks like they're just like masks and stuff. It's a Halloween store. It is a Halloween store, so I can't imagine they have something in there that's that valuable. Maybe have they have like relics. You know, like mummy toes and things. <laughs> like werewolf teeth. Like the real things. What? I'm sorry. For what? No dog tag ripoff in this one, though. Damn, ruined it. Get ready to run. It's probably. It's gonna take like a couple more bullets, and that should be. Oh. She's knocked out? Oh, that's not good. She was not good. She was not effective with that firearm. She's gonna she's a very bad fire. Well, it annoys me a little bit. I think he she should have easily killed it. Yeah. I think Oh, you should have kept used the gun. It sneaking up on them when they were playing music loud would have been perfect. But they didn't do that. Yeah. Hey, no reason someone else can't enjoy that. I guess they weren't that strong. I like the contrast in their reactions to it. Yeah. There's some more stuff over there you can break. There's more stuff over there you can break. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Wait, I see it, we got two options. Wait, I see it, we got two options. One, we take the easy way out. It's quick, painless. Option one, we take the easy way out. It's quick and painless. No. No, I don't like option one. Mm. 
I'm not a fan of option one. Option two. We just keep going. Two? We fight. Fight for what? What are you talking about, really? It's over. It will be. But not yet. We're gonna turn into one of those things. There are a million ways we should have died before today. It ends this way for everyone sooner or later, right? Some of us just get there faster than others. And a million ways we can die before tomorrow. But we fight for every second we get to spend with each other. But we don't quit. Whether it's two minutes or two days. Whether it's two minutes or two days, we don't give that up. We don't give that up. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to give that up. My vote? Let's just wait it out. They could just be all poetic and shit and lose our minds together. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. What's option three? What's option three? Sorry. They're both pretty great actresses. Yeah, yeah. performance is as strong as episode. That'll do. Uh, that was an episode, a whole episode. I mean, um, going to be my, probably my least favorite, but you know, <laughs> definitely my I'm, least I'm leaning favorite. Towards it being one of the weaker episodes of the season, even though I think that there's some pretty great elements in there. Um, yeah, yeah. I just uh, I really just didn't like. There was a couple times where I'm like, all right. Something needs to happen now. Like, I get it. They like Mortal Kombat. Let's go. I don't think that was my problem. I think they could have actually reinforced their relationship a little bit uh, better in that episode. I felt like they could have done a bit more. I think the uh, the time we had with them, I would have expected them to do a lot more in terms of binding yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you basically got a whole episode dedicated to them. And I, I don't feel like we got as much as uh, corresponds with the amount of time that we spent on it. Yeah, I, but I still probably would actually kind of call, that a, call it a pacing issue. I, I'm assuming doing rags you're not just talking about having action scenes but development yeah just sort of things some some more maybe some more back and forth on the the firefly stuff or the maybe more time with the the fedra people i don't know yeah i, I think just, we could have stood really... to get more time with the fedra stuff i think we could have the impression i get in terms of their back and forth is that as it's it's like the conversation's getting more and more real right as time goes on at the beginning it's just like fun banter but then as the night is sort of progressing and time is running out it's like 
it becomes more and more of like a real conversation about the differences between them and you know that there is like this problem here that they need to sort of work through and i kind of like the um, angle that I, I think there's like a mini firefly and a mini fedra agent here the, the... yeah pretty much and that the longer it goes on the more that they're going to start to i guess be more firm in their uh perspectives one way or the other i i guess what i'm i think what i want is uh not more conversation on that but maybe more conversation about other things than that that could have also been thrown into the mix yeah, like what they um, like prefer as people, or maybe like their 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 sort of modus operandi is individuals, right? Like, what is it that they, aside from how like they they, they fit into through. Fedra or the Fireflies, like what do they kind of want from life? I guess we kind of got a little bit of that. I, yeah, I think that's all I want is I just want a little bit more more material for both of them in this episode, which is funny to say when it was so focused on them. It just seems like, in terms of the density of the the character that we got, that it was a little bit thinner here than um than has been the case in other episodes. Yeah, and uh, it comes at a time that's very. I was, I was curious how I'd feel about this, but like you know, peak investment. Joel's nearly dead now. An hour with these two, and it's like okay. Well, I guess the 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 argument in favor of this is meant to be all feeding into Ellie's motivations, the desire to like not give up. Yeah, she'll sense, fight for every last up. second she can get with. Yeah, because anyone. what happened with Riley? I mean, obviously it didn't work out for her but you know ellie is alive and maybe in a position to do some real good in the world because she decided to fight through really difficult circumstance so if she's going to do it again well, yeah, so like thematically it's it's cool i just feel like we could have done more yeah i think i'm also uh hitting on a preference that i think would be shared by many in the audience it's like which is to focus more on the like the current situation that that they're in Part of it, like, what's funny to, to compare to the game is the fact that it's DLC means that it just, it can't really get in the way. It's something you play at your own leisure. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it's interesting because we more or less sort of came to the conclusion last week that this would be the time for this episode. Um, yeah. Um... I, think the, I think the problem is that I still, I feel like this episode can't come after the the what we're going to be getting in episode eight like i feel like it this needs probably to be is the best place for it uh, yeah. it's just that it's always going to be oh, a difficulty kind of... of in the game it is off uh, on as like kind of an epilogue prologue right to like to the main yeah. story i mean not only is it chronological but like it it's a great buffer between joel sort of falling and then ellie being in this state of like oh fuck what do i do now and her becoming a little bit more independent you know well it sounds and like you disagree then that you feel like this was that this that this slots in super well um i think this could have been condensed um, okay like right. the the riley and ellie stuff and then i would have liked the third act of this episode to introduce like the david stuff right maybe lead i think mm, uh okay. i think that that could work as well i imagine that that was probably not entertained though my guess mm. would be that they always thought that this would be a whole episode yeah and um, it's like how can we tweak it to make it more fruitful then i guess it's like probably what we've all said less about the rooftop jumping relationship um... stuff <laughs> but to be honest with you i wouldn't have been like... against involving oh, yeah. more um scenes in the present instead of just the two main ones now i'm not going to say in the game ellie drags joel to like a, a mall type place and she searches through it for medical supplies she goes to a pharmacy at first which is perfectly reasonable but uh, i think everything's empty in there and then she notes that there is a crashed military helicopter at the ceiling and she finds every material she needs in there i've always found that yeah. to be lame as fuck <laughs> Which is funny, right? Because if she had found it in the pharmacy, I probably would have been like, well, I guess it's lucky it hasn't been ransacked, but that makes a lot more sense. Uh, like, uh, and and a it's fine. And convenient helicopter. Yeah. yeah, and then there's also the angle that she kills, like, I want to say 30 bandits or raiders and, like, 30 infected or something. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, because you're doing the video game stuff. Meanwhile, here, there is literally one person that she kills with. Uh... And so maybe you could have another two scenes and she has to work a little bit harder to get the material she needs to save Joel in some way. We can so contrive something. maybe more so in integrate the other component of the left behind dlc which was maybe yeah winter stuff yeah with some tweaks because uh that's a big blast of these two and you're going to need the conversations they have to be very interesting to keep everybody invested right, uh, because the reality is that as an audience regardless of whether you know about the games or not you are going to be pretty hyper invested in your protagonist being on death's door yeah no i think a lot of people who haven't even played the game if they're watching the show one by one i think this episode comes a little bit of a disappointment but i'm hoping that episode eight will be everything it needs to be. Well, so out of curiosity, what would you put forth as the main difference between this and episode three in terms of what might be the observation of you have this whole story that's running that doesn't seemingly apparently feed directly into the main plot? I think that it's the very apparent that episode three captured an entire lifetime of a relationship while this 
tried to capture a limited a portion of time, yeah. and I don't even know that they spent the time that well. Well, that would be. I think that I think that they were pretty effective with the time that they used in episode three to tell the story between Bill and Frank. Yeah, like I feel like we got a lot of dimensions to that relationship, where it feels like we we explored one very specific dimension of this relationship. When I feel like we could have gotten, I think I just want a better understanding of who Riley is. Because I feel like after that episode, it's like, I've got a decent understanding of who she is. Um, but I, I don't feel like I've got a very great picture of, of like, her overall. And the, Mostly the... it's in relation to Ellie and the Firefly stuff, but not really much else. Setting justification wasn't very good. Um... No, that was probably the weakest part of the episode. It's just this constant thought in the back of your mind of, like, why is this? So they're in the shopping center. It's got power. There's no infected, maybe. Fedra doesn't care about it, maybe. But also, you've been here for a while, like, just as a, a posting. It's just kind of world-building and plot questions, which um, haven't typically been as much of a problem in this this show so far. I did kind of like yeah, was... having uh, Joel awake enough to know that she had the chance to leave, and she chose to stay and save him sort of thing. Yeah, like that'll this. be super meaningful to him. I quite like the shot where they're yeah. holding each other's hand. That's, that was... Uh, oh, dude, stuff. imagine in the finale if he's recalling that as well as, like, feeding in, uh, you know, because, of course, that would have fed into it in the game as well, but yeah. maybe more of that conscious awareness. Yeah. Yeah, not to say that he wouldn't be aware that she saved him, no, no course, matter whether he's awake or not, but being awake to see that happen is... Uh... Well, because it seems like there's much more of the, at least from my understanding of the game, my read on it was that he was, like, out for the whole time, that he was just constantly sleeping, yeah. exhausted, totally unaware of what was going on, and Ellie was taking care of everything. I agree that I wanted a bit more, like, to understand Riley's perspective a bit more. I think it could have done with a scene at the beginning where she's, like, with the fireflies sort of feigning compliance and then well, maybe maybe and then she escapes her, at the very beginning her. where she's like yes i'll i'll sit in my room everything's fine and then she has an opportunity to leave and she escapes out a window or something but before that you see her engaging with her like firefly superiors or whatever giving her giving you a sense of like where she's at what she has to deal with i think what i might want is the fedra her with fedra see what she was like uh there so maybe uh, she, maybe yeah. that does mean a bit of a time jump because of course there'd need to be some passage of time but maybe that would be worthwhile i don't yeah. know i feel like there is something to be tweaked it's kind of what you're honing in on i think i would have liked to fight too about like fedra weed out anybody who's going to be changing in any significant way the status quo and then ellie could be like they haven't weeded me out and then she'd be like yeah because you're you're careful with how you say like this that and then she's like oh am i it's like you think fedra is so much worse than they actually are and then she could be like fedra do this that the other and she's like you fuckers do more damage than fedra ever do does you know they kind of play it this sort of thing but it would have been nice to maybe have three main conversations that run argument. throughout and then yeah. at the end they realize like fireflies fedra it's all the fucking same like it's it's just a mess we're all fighting and that we need to you know something maybe a little bit sappy but yeah because yeah. i think the closest we got was the fight with the the pipe bombs that was like the most we yeah. got and i feel like we could have gotten one or two more heated arguments about it we just need I, a little bit more because conflict they, i think they did a lot of scenes of them happily enjoying their time together with each other which is totally good and fine i just think because you think about it it's like playing with the masks the dancing with the mask playing mortal Kombat together doing the carousel these all show up by the way in the in the game in too the game. but i don't know it feels like they knew in the game they had to pace it so that players wouldn't want to like you know leave or pause and because the way they do it is the intercut back and forth between present and past and well, yeah uh, the present the present day is like the combat focused stuff whereas the uh the shopping center was much more story heavy yeah but there's a running sequence in there which is another change by the way it's kind of funny i on one hand i prefer that they don't suddenly have to deal with a horde even yeah, though it is more justified in this because they have the hive mind network thing going on however they went with one it's like okay i can deal with one then it's like oh but the the only reason that he got you two is because you didn't handle it very well at all i guess the thing is though is riley missing it's like yeah, maybe she, she doesn't really... get trained very well. It's not quite know? that. Like... It's that she sees him, she goes to aim, I think she tags him three times, like two to, in the right, torso, one in the leg, the ground, and, and then like, stops run, firing run, and runs away. And it's like, well, yeah. no, 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 finish him. Finish no. him now. Once These are why you have those rounds. Are you course. saving them for later? Yeah, like, it makes no he's sense at all. You keep shooting. Execute him at that point. You've got the best shot you'll ever get when he's on the floor. you got the head right there, and that's what you got to do. And so she stops, tries to run and block, like, her direction, and then he pushes her, I think, or tackles her or something, and then she just gets knocked out, and it's like, ah, oh, this is a lame action scene. Yeah, it's just more logis action scene, logistics kind of not being great. Could she maybe have only had that many bullets left in the gun? I don't Three? know if that was established, maybe. like I imagine it was fully loaded. That'd be my guess. 
Okay. Feels weird that we only have three in it. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're gonna I give think... you a gun and a magazine, but we're only gonna give you three bullets for it. It seems weird. And you I know feel like what? there should there think... should have been a scene where she takes a clip out and it's like, oh, I only got three bullets left. Well, in this I don't think that's something. what happened. I don't think she ran out of ammo. I think she just stopped. Well, especially because they have a shot. The they end, do the. Yeah, they do the, uh, getting knocked out with the gun. Flying they have away. a shot yeah. of the gun. Yeah, which oh, is a very much a show have thing. Gun that they're, they're planning on using to uh, potentially they kill themselves. Kill themselves. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, so there's got to be more bullets in there. Yeah, they. She just. I'd been like, why the fuck decide not to shoot the zombie again? I was, for some reason. I was thinking if they were going to show that, then like, so are we going to have like that scene? It, and it's a shame because the time code shows on VLC and everything. But I was like. Are they going to show the scene where Riley starts to turn, but Ellie doesn't? Interesting you say and it. I feel like that's something that was missing in both the game and the show. I, I don't know. That seems like I a really good scene. Been... Well, because yeah. what does that look like exactly of Ellie actually being okay, but then Riley gets more and more crazy. deteriorated until she starts turning and they both realize, like, why aren't you? And then it's too late and Riley starts going, blah, 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 and she's like, you know, that would be fucking traumatic as hell. Well, but I guess I guess the thing is, is that you would imagine that that's the point where Marlene links up, right? That that. Yeah. And maybe maybe that's what the scene looks like that that Marlene shows up and Ellie seems to be totally fine while Riley is deteriorating, even though they have bites in pretty much the same way. Yeah, like if Ellie had to kill her in some horrible moment and then the uh, fireflies turn up because this is apparently a firefly area, and then they just, as you said, they just find her and they're, and they're like you know they pull a gun on it. When were you bitten? And then she's like, at this point, it's been like you know, however long, and they realize nothing is spreading, nothing is... And so they capture her immediately and they figure out what they're going to do, and they realize she just doesn't get infected, which links right up with episode one, then, yeah. I wonder if that is, like, because it's almost like, well, it is more poetic if you don't see it deteriorate. It's like, but it does, though, and that's kind of what makes it really tragic, isn't it? Yeah, I Even mean... Even more than how tragic it is that they both got infected, the fact that one of them dies and the other one survives and has to sort of deal with that. I wouldn't want to take it away from an artist to be like, I don't want to show that scene, you know how it goes, and it's like, I guess you, it's up to you, I but I feel like it's... I mean, I, feel like I don't really <laughs> know how it goes, actually. Well, I, I think I, something that I agree, because remember at the, end of, at the end of The Last of Us, how like Ellie gives a speech of, you know, like Riley was the first to die, and then it was Tess, and then it was Sam. Like, that she's the one who keeps surviving. Yeah. Um, like, sort of having to deal with that almost survivor-like guilt um, that she might have. If it was like, that would be a really good way to reinforce it. Like, it's sad. It, it would be really sad. It would be a really sad scene on top of the sad scene that was already there. Well, and you can, you can definitely, through careful dialogue, just have her uh, express dramatically, like, why me and why can't I help you? Yeah. Because yeah. that'll set a foundation it, then. It seems like it's a potential opportunity. It would be tough, I think, from a, like, from a writing standpoint. It, it's you got to be, I think, pretty considered in terms of, like, how you want it to play out and how it would feed into our character going forward. But, yeah, I guess I'm kind of surprised. I, I was almost thinking that that's what we would get in this episode is how it leads directly into her linking up with the Fireflies. But maybe that's just going to be vague. Like, maybe we'll never know. Well, I, think, I think that think... could be a good scene, but to be honest, I'm personally kind of glad that doesn't go there. I don't think we need to see that scene. It would be so bleak if they did that. Like, to show Ellie just, like, killing off <laughs> Riley. Like, I don't know. Well, I, 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 don't kinda, know I, li I like where like this that. story good. ends. They had a whole episode to be happy. Now it's time to pay the piper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some drama coming in episode eight. I'm sure. I was uh, I was really impressed with their performances, though. Both of them. I at this point, yeah, I feel like good. anybody saying Bella yeah. Ramsey can't act is like, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. No, she's good. Yeah, no, I'm happy. To I say, say she's that good. she's. I th I'd say she's pretty good at this point. Like she, uh, it feels like she's had several scenes at this point that have really, uh, I guess, pushed her to the extremes of like human emotions. Um, I was the same with uh. Uh, the actress for Riley as well. Oh yeah, she, she was, was yeah. really crying there in the end. She was she and, was like like bowling. And what I liked about their little story in this episode is that there is an identifiable zigzag with like their attraction to one another. Like the first point is in the photo booth where Riley leans in a little too close, and Ellie is a bit uncomfortable. I mean, she likes her, but he she's just like, okay, this is a little bit more than I was expecting in this moment in time like can you just back off a bit please and riley reads this she's like okay okay sorry and then like the next point is in the arcade machine where um ellie is like waiting for her to for riley to kiss her and she doesn't probably because riley is thinking about how ellie reacted in the photo booth and is going well i don't want to weird her out so i just won't and then ellie's kind of disappointed but the problem with that is that in the game that beat was better because with the arcade machine in the 
game, it's not working. And it's like an Angel Knives game. And like Riley is like saying, just grab the controls. Just trust me. Close your eyes. And then Riley has this whole bit where she like narrates the game as if it was powered up and working. And then you kind of go into Ellie's head and it's like she's, you can see her sort of envisioning the game in her mind. And then like Ellie seeing that work that Riley is putting in to make her happy, that's kind of what prompts her to like wait for the kiss that then doesn't happen. And this, I feel like it doesn't work as well just with the functioning Mortal Kombat 2 machine. It's um, interesting as a comparison, I guess. Yeah, you can see that. Because it is a lot for a friend to try and generate an experience that you're not even having versus the place just being on and active. Yeah, and then it all culminates, obviously, with the kiss on the glass cabinet. Yeah, I think there's a lot of tweaks that could be made to improve this one, and I think I agree. I think this is the weakest of the season. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I'm there. I think I'm there at this point. I thought this was fine, but I have to agree. Yeah, this was probably the weakest. Well, it's a good it's a good skill flaw, I'd say, to have. I just I'm hoping they can they can Well, cuz the floor, yeah, yeah, the floor here still isn't bad, uh, and there's still some there's still some worthwhile stuff in this episode. Mm-hmm. I've just, I just I want to see the next episode. Give me. I want to see how I, they I'm adapt. Still, it. I'm still excited to see how it all plays out. Well, that was The Last of Us episode 7, EFAP TV. Closing out, saying goodbye, Toodle Pip, Cheery Osif. Yeah, bye. Bye bye. Hello everybody. Bye bye. bye. You little thief. What'd you bring me?